Welcome. This is Ricky. And this is Richard. And this, this is, is the Miss Trigger, Trigger Podcast. Podcast. Tonight we're going to go over some uh, some gameplay from tonight and why we call ourselves the Miss Trigger Podcast. Uh, so tonight, Friday, F&M uh, EDH tournament over at CCG House. Uh, I literally sat there for I believe it was either four or five turns uh, with the win combo on the table. And it was a, a card. I, it was a, I was running Brea. I had out Eldrazi Displacer, and I'm used to running uh, that combo with Ashnod's Altar, and I just added Koldotha Forge Master to the deck. Uh, sacrifice an artifact, add two colorless mana. So the, the combo works when you, if you don't know, uh, Eldrazi Displacer exiles a target creature, returns it to the battlefield tapped. So you cost three colorless to activate that ability. You blink Brea, bring her back, she gets two tokens. You then sacrifice the, both tokens to either Ashnod's Altar or Koldotha Fort, or sorry, Clad Clan, Clad Clan Ironwork, uh, and lets you sacrifice those, create four mana, use three of it to re-blink Brea with Eldrazi Displacer, then Brea comes back and enters with two more Thopters, and you have a uh, one colorless mana floating. So. You do it again and again and again until you pick a number, a million colorless mana. Then you blink Brea with Eldrazi Displacer and your, your floating mana that you have and just keep bringing her back until you have as many Thopters as you want. Brea's abilities, pay two, sacrifice two artifacts, and either gain five life, give target creature, neg four, neg four till end of turn, or do three damage to target player. So you just do three damage to target player until everybody at the table is dead. Um, so I, I I always ran the combo in the deck with Ashnod's Altar. I just found Clyde Clan Ironworks and I put it out on the battlefield and was using it to sacrifice stuff for mana and just completely spaced that, duh. This, I mean, even the guy I was playing in uh, the Edric deck even to asked, you know, oh, isn't, did you just go infinite? And I looked at him and I said, no, no, I'm not there yet. Yet. and literally i think it was like five turns and it just dawned on me and i'm like oh my gosh and i thankfully both the other guys i was playing against ran kind of slow but the the point of this is we're uh two guys that love playing edh um we feel we have extremely competitive decks uh for the game meta of our store that we play at and we don't want people thinking that we're a couple of guys that think that we're all that or we're smarter than hell. We were, I consider myself an idiot and, um, I know you are. Yeah. Well, just wait people. As soon as you get to know Richard, as well as I have, you're going to call me the smart one probably. But anyway, <laughs> uh, point is miss trigger podcasts. I miss triggers all the fucking time. I rage crit the other day because I missed a trigger and the guy that points everything out to everybody that they do wrong knew I missed a trigger and kept his mouth shut because that's kind of one of the only ways he can win against our decks. It's a compliment in one way and extremely annoying and frustrating in another. How was your game at your table? The your let's uh, what were you playing? Who were you playing tonight? And what was your uh, the the first table you played? What was that about? All right, I was playing with Narset. She has hex proof on first strike and whenever she attacks I exile the top four of my card and can cast any non creature spell, so any sorcery or instant spell, uh artifact or planeswalker. Oh and enchantment as well. Um started off with a great opening hand, solving turn one. And uh, turn two, I drew into Thought Vessel, which was nice. That gave me an extra one and an unlimited hand size, which wasn't really necessary. But the, I thought I'd be holding more hand, more cards in my hand as I'm casting through her. Uh, but yeah, but worked out great because that meant turn three, no set, which is awesome. Six turn six, uh, commander on turn three. Yeah, that's that's pretty dang good. Yeah, and the first swing out got aggravated assault. <laughs> <laughs> what does that one do again? Uh, it lot is an enchantment, three drop, one red plus two, and you can play two red plus three, untap your creatures, and get an additional combat phase. This has to be paid during the combat phase. That sounds like a really good idea for a commander like that. Oh, definitely. The more attacks, the more spells I get to cast off of her. And the next turn, Anthony plays on 
play, uh, another player who was playing uh, Derevi uh, casted one of the new green curses, the one that whenever you attack this player, you untap your lands. It's a green curse. So it wasn't until it became my next turn that they realized the mistake they had made. Because that in turn gave me, because it untapped all non-land permanents. And so the the card he's referring to is a two drop green enchantment or a curse called Curse of Bounty. Enchant player, whenever enchanted player is attacked, untap all la- non land permanents you control. Each opponent attacking that player untaps all non land permanents he or she controls. And I believe it has to deal damage. Is that correct? Or is it just attack? Attacks, just attacks, and with aggravated assault in there. Yes. Oh, that's that's awesome. Yes. I although I didn't get it the uh, first time because I didn't have enough of the in, in mana rocks to do it. Uh, but my next turn, I hit Gilded Lotus with no sets attack. Get <laughs> free Gilded Lotus. Yes. Oh, that's a that's a horrible thing to do. I mean, that just sucks. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't get it till after the attack phase, so I had to wait one more turn, which was hell. And then, uh, so the guy who had the curse on him threw down a couple defensive creatures, including the con- Consecrated Sphinx. Uh, the Draw Sphinx. It's a wonderful card. If you're running blue, you have to have it. The uh, Constipated Sphinx uh, is one of the one of the better cards for uh, anybody getting into Commander. And for those of you out there that don't have it, um, it is going to be... It was spoiled under the uh, Iconic Masters coming out here in a little bit. So they're going to be reprinting it. The price is probably going to go down. Uh, it's, it's a two, at six drop, two blue plus four flying four, six creature Sphinx, uh, says whenever an opponent draws a card, you may, may draw two cards. Card draw is essential to, to EDH, no matter who you're running as your commander. So, sorry I interrupted you. He threw down the Sphinx. Um, so he had, uh, he had defense. Now, this is where I missed my trigger, because I thought I had to deal damage to get the trigger. Oh, for the curse? Yes, for the curse. And he had the Sphinx, which was stronger than the set, yep. so I didn't attack him. But were you able to still get the trigger anyways, whether you attacked him or... No, it ha- it's it's uh it's the curse. You have to attack the person. Who's cursed. Oh, yeah, that was dumb. Yeah. Miss trigger. So I I continue to take cheap shots at uh, the player of the city cross for me. I'm unfamiliar with his name, but he was playing with Feek the mini and just whacked me for like ten. And then I, when I swung at him, that's when I finally started getting my first extra turn spells. And then it was just over after that. Uh, I ended up getting Ruin Nation, which wiped Revy's board uh, off all the lands. Ruin Nation is uh, a red sorcery that says it destroys all non-basic lands. Now, running non-basic land hate in there, I run few non-basic lands sticking with more basic, which is my normal play um until recently but having the destroy non-basic takes out majority of the more competitive players land base while leaving mine in somewhat manageable shape so we will do a episode later on down the road going over mana bases of edh uh lands yes very essential but at which point uh once i removed the sphinx i was able to do with a uh with uh dropping the car i got Karn and with no sets ability uh liberated or silver golem uh Karn liberated god I the planeswalker yeah it's beautiful i got cast him for free with no sets attack that's just I, i'm gonna go throw up that's just fucking gross yeah so i immediately used his nag three his middle drop to remove the consecrated sphinx, the thing I thought was preventing me from, you know, going infinite turns bouncing off of him. So it, when I then went into, at this point in time, I think I had like four extra turns in a row. <laughs> 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 because uh, throughout the process, I did get Miari, which was actually the game changer, the one that allowed me to take. Uh, being dangerous to being lethal because i was able to copy the extra turn spells and the extra combat phase spells and of course things like phagmatize although it is only a one drop white being able to copy it was great so what was the 
What was the wind condition? Well, as soon as I started swinging at the salty eye, well, the wind condition was scooping. Ah, that 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 is one of the best. Yes, the next person to scoop was Rafik the Mini because he had attacked me and hit me for ten with his commander. It was a pretty nasty hit. I was very concerned, but now I had multiple extra turns and I was pounding it on him with Narset, who was only beefed by a plus one plus one. But so doing what like three damage each? Four actually. Four. <laughs> yeah, doing four damage a turn, but pick. A, pick pick away yeah after the third attack he's like all right i scoop <laughs> so he scooped too now throughout the process of the game uh Aunt, uh derevi had he had copied uh mimeoplasm old salty face had uh copied his consecrated sphinx and they had drawn up the deck but derevi was praying trying hard to find his psych rift he would kept begging for it as he drew because <laughs> he wanted to put my my stuff in my hand but he didn't get it and after he'd drawn himself down to what apparently was 15 cards i then played startled awake <laughs> and dropped him down to two and i still had two turns left and once i did he he dropped his damnation and his psych rift into the graveyard, which he said was the only two cards he had that could possibly stop this. Nice. So he was the final scoop. Um, Savala, he scooped because he's like, well, uh, I'm going to take my leave now because I can go play more magic. Savala, <laughs> <laughs> Savala, a, he's a very smart player. <laughs> That's for sure. And that and poor Zavala got shit for cards. He tried, but anything he did got shut down almost immediately. Although he did play uh, quite a uh, great creature to their situation. Yeah, what um, was that? I, I can't remember. A behemoth that allowed him to go tutor for a creature with, uh, I think it was three or less. And he went and got the Fierce Empath, which then allowed him to tutor for... Oh, and he used... What is that? There's a sorcery that allows you to sacrifice a creature and go search for a creature and put it on the battlefield. Say that again. A sorcery that allowed you to start the process. He used a sorcery that allowed him to sacrifice a creature, which he sacrificed his commander to go get this behemoth. That allowed you to go get something that was three or less and put it onto the battlefield, which he then got the fierce impact and put that on the battlefield. And then turn in turn went and got Kozlik to hand. <laughs> But at no point did he ever get enough ramp or enough mana to come close to casting him. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. But I was very, uh, I was very pleased. This was the uh, first group setting Narset has seen, besides a couple of quick play tests. Uh, she came out turn three and was just awesome. I can't believe you actually played the deck tonight. I was when I found out that's what you won with. I was shocked because you you just put it together, um, and and you've only test played it against me with one of my super broken deck and i mean i was i was impressed with how well it did but i mean the 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 no test play the no double check the throw it right into the mix was a little a little out of your norm yeah it was, it was impressive lately i've been just trying to be more daring in ways i guess so uh that was the that was the pods that we played in um so just to recap i uh <laughs> i had the win con on the table for instant infinite combo and fucked it up but still got lucky enough to get the W. Richard got his W. Uh, the other two decks we were playing against was uh, partner decks from C16, uh, Thrasios, and then uh, Tanya or something like that. The black-white one had something to do with drawing card. Uh, basically, it's a, a protein whole glass combo deck. Uh, Narset, Brea, my, my Brea, Richard's Narset, and then the Godfather was playing uh, what has to be one of the scariest decks in the entire Portland Metropolitan area um this is a uh, a turn one turn two win on a consistent basis every once in a while take turn three or four uh but but for the most part um it, it you've never seen something so consistent and uh i don't want to give away what this particular deck is it's one that you just kind of have to experience and if you you play enough in portland or you come up to visit us in vancouver um the you, you probably get a chance to play against it so the all of us at the table we're all kind of buddies we're all friendly we've all played together outside of the shop and at the shop um and the with basically the the deck the godfather has uh has just absolutely mopped all three of our asses on multiple occasions multiple fucking occasions i've 
I played against this deck one on one ten times in a row, just trying to see if I could do anything. And it, it I'm, I'm lucky if I ever get to see my fifth fucking turn. Um, it's a low, low build deck, with, uh, meaning it's got low, com low mana cost. Um, it pretty much has all the hateful aid in it. Every any way to generate mana at a low cost is is in this deck on top of a bunch of other precisely placed cards that just synergize perfectly. But point is, the three of us have lost to this deck enough. We know how to we know how to handle it, and we also know what we need to do without being bullshit table politics where you're telling everybody oh he's got this you need to make sure you do can you take care of that because if you can take care of that i'll take care of this and then he won't have those and then you know set him back a little bit when you when you run infinite combos that's the type of hate you get and it's very frustrating but at the same time it, it's kind of fun because when you still win and watch them get frustrated it's a beautiful thing but anyway so uh back on point so um i want to say the godfather like turn one it was like mox opal mox diamond mana vault and a land what was the land ancient tomb he had freaking ancient tomb that's what it was it was ancient tomb into soul ring float one for mana vault mox diamond mox opal and we're all just sitting there like fuck because this commander costs two two black plus three to cast and we know that once the commander hits the battlefield we might be lucky and get one more turn maybe two so we go to turn two uh and he tutors for some thing i don't remember what it was that he got but i ended up we ended up making it a couple more turns i think it uh was like six altogether but what i did was uh, actually i think he i if i remember right he did cast his commander turn one and used to dc the tutor you're right he did he did he did fucking cast to dc turn one it was pretty fucking gross it was it was a sight to be seen i've never seen a turn one drop five drop before ever yeah it was it was a uh, an exceptionally good opening hand um uh, but so he uh i turn three i end up with uh sidri in my hand um which if you're not familiar with Sidri, you should become familiar with Sidri. She's very fun to build the deck around. Um, she's got a, a few different abilities, but the one we're going to talk about is the first ability, which says pay one blue, target artifact becomes a creature till end of turn. Its power and toughness are equal to its mana cost. Um, I, I I love Sidri. Um, I think she's one of the most beautiful little things that I've ever had a chance to kill somebody with. Uh, in this instant, um, what I did was I, I only it was turn three. I didn't have any extra mana. Put her out. We go to turn four i draw into misty rainforest i go get a, a blue mana source i now have three blue mana sources on the battlefield and i proceed to animate his mox opal animate his mox diamond and now he can't generate the black mana necessary to cast the card that's going to help him win the game and this is somebody that has helped me out with some deck um and uh, and, and taught me a lot so it was absolutely fucking awesome to just royally screw him to where he couldn't even fucking cast his card that was so fun <laughs> it was i mean even he at uh, after the game like multiple times was just like man that was so well played and the the guy running the protein hold flash combo um is another person who's whose deck building skills uh we we, we respect very highly and he, he doesn't build garbage when i cast sidri he just kind of like throws his hands up in the air and is just why why what really that's he's casting his commander over there turn one and you're gonna put fucking sidri down and kind of kind of flipped me a little shit thinking i had something better up my sleeve and then when i started animating his fucking mana rocks and they died it was just like laughter erupted at the table <laughs> i mean even the godfather was sitting there with a big grin on his face like you son of a bitch you got me <laughs> so then the game the game ended with uh, protein hulk flash combo uh taking taking the mat and you know it's it's not a game of commander if everybody at the table uh wouldn't be able to win on their next turn uh when once the game's actually over but it was a great match it was a great night uh protein hulk had a solid win and we all had a really good time so anything you want to add I just wanted to point out that uh, I got no set out turn three again on the second round as well. Although didn't get much time to do much with her. Yeah, two two uh, back to back Narset turn three is is pretty fucking good. Really, it, it really is. fucking good. It hopefully it'll be a nice consistent deck. So the the place we play, uh, you may have heard of it, you may not have heard of it. CCG House. Um, they're we're not affiliated with them. They're we're not they're not sponsoring us or anything. Uh, the wonderful meta game there uh fridays they have a tournament at 8 15 uh saturdays they have a tournament at one o'clock one o'clock yes one o'clock uh ccghouse.com 
the tournament base here is a uh it's free to to play you don't pay any entry fee which and, is rare yeah and is and is really nice because it allows people that um you know don't necessarily uh have the the greatest decks or anything to worry about uh because when you when you're paying to get in there's bigger prizes when there's bigger prizes you get bigger batter players that do gross things um and the free you know it'll it'll attract those guys for a little while but they end up leaving after a while and going to other stores and it, it it's it's meshed for a really good combination of infinite combos beat down deck um and uh it's 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 a wonderful environment so um uh, the environment at CCG is awesome. Um, everybody's everybody's friendly. It's like any other card store, you know. A lot of things are going to be the same, you know. It's it's uh, your standard banquet room, folding tables with uh, just basic hard office chairs, no cushions, which suck. Um, well, there's a couple of ones, but they're hidden in the back of the big table with cushions. But that's true. Still there's very always hard. there's always some fucking good chairs hidden down in Dungeons and Dragons Land. Yeah, and they're they're never out in the in the standard or the commander area. Um, um, so uh, we 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 want to encourage anybody out there. Um, if you don't play at CCG, come by, say hi, give it a shot. Uh, if you want us to come to you, uh, it's got to be a Friday night. Uh, keep in mind, we're uh, we got we got kids and we work forty hours and we're old and we're uh, grown men and we handle our business. That's one way to put it. Um, but anyways, thanks for listening and we'll catch you all later.